This one is going to be about the basic farms. The box farm. The cylinder. The cone. And the sphere. So I think you can probably do almost everything with these. If you ask other people, um, go check out Will Weston stuff. He adds the ribbon. And then he also uses the prism. and the pyramid, which is also potentially useful. Okay, so you've got basically seven forms to know how to draw. So let's go over some concerns for each one. The one that you'll notice is a little bit funky is the sphere. The sphere is nothing until you light it. It's honestly just a circle. Then as soon as you light it, it gets a shadow core and makes a little hemisphere. So it's this little curve that makes a sphere a sphere, right? And then when you light it, it's got tone over the dark side, it becomes a form, right? But it's not much of a form until then. Now this requires that you know how to do an ellipse. I think the most useful thing about this particular form is um, you know the way that you the way that you can round it and apply things to it. So if you combine the ellipse right with the sphere, you have something very powerful. Right? Remember, the ellipse is the mathematically perfect circle turned in perspective and you know, you can do these loosely, or you can measure them out and do them tightly, either way. But it's important to get a good instinct for ellipses, right? And their distinctive quality is that they're symmetrical in all four quadrants, that this distance is the same as this distance, this distance to the axis is the same as this distance, right? That brings us over to the cylinder, right? The cylinder is basically a rectangle on which you pull an ellipse. So if you wanted to include this central axis, you could very easily pull an ellipse and check its symmetry by drawing something like that. So you can, for, for the cylinder, you can start with the rectangle and then curve it. No big deal. Let's see, the cone is also quite simple. You can start with your ellipse, draw a triangle. You can also draw a triangle, curve it. If you need to tilt that triangle back, you make the triangle go away in space. Put your ellipse there, right? Boom. So the triangle, so these all relate to the basic shapes, right? And it's always important to remember those basic shapes. So, so far what we've been able to do is use the circle to create that, we use the um, rectangle to create the cylinder, we use the triangle to create the cone. Next funky thing is we're actually going to use triangles to create a box form. So your box from the front is a square. Your box in two-point perspective, if the box is giant and bigger than you, is basically two triangles that you cut off, right? So this 
becomes your new box form. You can get fancy and put a horizon line, make sure they all connect, whatever. Doesn't really matter. What you need to remember is triangles, right? Now a box in two point perspective where it's below the horizon line, right? Think of the front of the box. You go triangle, 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 triangle. Then you've got your two sides, right? Then to finish off the top, you go triangle, triangle, and you create the top. So you have this triangle, this triangle, this triangle, this triangle. So what you're really using is four triangles to create this box, okay? If you're drawing triangles that go away from each other or parallel, it's not a triangle. So just double, double check yourself that you're making triangles. That'll help you draw this box. Your uh, prismatic structure, triangle, right? If you draw a perfect triangle like that, it's going to be very hard to get a prismatic structure. You're going to have to do something like this, right? So it goes back in space like that, which is fine, but I think it's more fun to pretend like it's on the ground. So you do a triangle that's a little bit funky, tilt it. Then you make it go back in space like you're looking at a typical little pup tent. And there you go. You can also turn this into like a card, like if there's a greeting card or something. You got triangle, back, boom, and you got a greeting card. You may also want to be able to stand that form up, right? So if you think of it as like greeting card again, there you go. Greeting card standing up and so on. You could also make that overlap. Greeting card standing up. And you don't have to draw it, but you're thinking of this line right here connecting to that intersecting point. There you go. So that's a collection of ways to draw that prismatic structure. Um, you have two kinds of pyramids. You have triangular and rectangular pyramids. You're not probably not going to encounter triangular pyramids very much. But if you do, you're going to have to include that back line because the funny thing about it is that um, rectangular pyramids and triangular pyramids basically look the same from the front. So unless you're constructing stuff where it's important where you know that back is, um, it doesn't really matter how you construct it, just that you know that they're going to be the same. Um, it can be more interesting if you kind of tilt them a little bit and put that um, second line off center, the center line off the middle. So if it goes straight up and down, your pyramid's going to be kind of boring. If you make that at an angle, it's going to be more interesting. You probably want to be able to draw the ribbon as this S-curve like I drew it there. But you may also want to draw it kind of like coming towards you. So you could draw a ribbon like that. Ribbons are super important. Basically what a ribbon is, is you've taken, you're just taking a section of the cylinder, right? So if you take a cylinder, make it shallow, and then cut out a bit of it, essentially what you've got is a ribbon, right? So that's a potential way to think about a ribbon and to connect them to the other forms. The funny thing about it is, in terms of your shape, your rectangular shape translates into the cylinder, right? Your triangular shape tra translates into the box form. The cone, the prism, and the pyramid, right? Your circle is going to translate, at least in part, here. 
circle in perspective into the cylinder. It's going to translate into the cone. Um, it's going to help with the ribbon for sure. The ribbon kind of uses elements of all three in this organic, funky way. And uh, that's about it. You might use elements of rectangular stuff here, but it's de-emphasized. So what you'll notice, probably, is that triangles are the, mo are the more versatile and powerful shape. The square or rectangle is probably the least versatile in terms of creating form. The um, circle, on its own, kind of does nothing. But when it's turned into ellipse, it is also quite important and powerful.